Hey, hi, this is Arnav from Scale-Up. Welcome to another episode of T-Factor. And uh, today we will talk about engineering manager interviews and how you can get into engineering manager roles. If you are a software development engineer currently or somebody who is senior in, in basically the individual contributor track, how do you make the switch? When should you make the switch? How can you make the switch? All of these things we will discuss. We will start off first with uh, when you're going for engineering manager interviews, what are the things that people are uh, looking at, right? So first of all, uh, we have to understand here uh, that, that a lot of times people think that this is the most natural transition as we grow senior. We are an engineer, we are a senior engineer, we are leading a team as an engineer, and then okay, the next thing is we become engineering manager which is actually not the case. The reality is that in most companies, you will find that while the ladder starts at an SD, one, two, three kind of levels, after that level, there is a fork in the ladder. You can continue as an individual contributor. You can be a staff engineer, a lead engineer, a principal engineer. You can, uh, some companies have names like chief scientist, architect, whatever, or you can go into people management, right? The thing is, as an engineering manager, uh, you are not a general manager. So you are not just managing people. You're not just listening to people's problems and just doing their appraisals and payrolls. You have to be managing an engineering team. And an engineering team is not just the people, but also the product that they work on, the technology that they work on. So your, both your skills, understanding the tech that is being worked on and running the team is important as an engineering manager career. People often underestimate the importance of communication, documentation, stakeholder management type of skills, which are very, very essential in engineering management. Now, if I ideally look, take a look at what are the ideal sort of engineering management interviews that happen in most companies, you will see that uh, in most good quality tech companies and product companies and in even the FANG-like companies, there is obviously already going to be some sort of judgment of your technical skill first off, because as an engineering manager, nobody is interested in hiring you if your technical competence is at least not of a certain level because then it becomes harder for uh, the team whom you will be managing to have uh, respect for uh, the technical decisions that you will be taking. Because if the team thinks that your knowledge of how software works, your knowledge of programming, your knowledge of system design is worse than everybody else in the team, they don't want to trust your judgment. And you will have to take a lot of technical calls as part of your work as an engineering manager as well. So most companies will take a basic programming level, you know, programming knowledge, either interview or a test or, or some proof of work, whether you have worked as an individual contributing engineer in, in some good company already before, maybe they won't test that, but then they will at least see that, right? So if, if somebody is hiring an engineering manager, they do want to know that this person actually knows how to code. They can actually code a fairly complex thing themselves already. Second thing is uh, high level design skills are obviously very, very important because uh, if you are managing a team and then especially at more senior levels of the engineering management ladder itself, if you are a senior engineering manager or if you are a, a director of engineering, you might have multiple teams reporting to you. And, and these multiple teams could be working on uh, different backend services or one team working on backend, one team working on frontend. If that's the case, then your understanding of how these systems talk to each other, your understanding of where are the bottlenecks between these systems, your understanding of if one of the systems go down, how to recover the other systems, that's very important. And that's why high level design is something that engineering management interviews will highly index on. Because if you don't understand how the systems in, in a greater context work with each other, you are not a capable engineering manager. That's sort of covering the technical side of the skills. And this is sort of the prerequisite. I mean, without these, you won't get hired as a SD3 or a senior engineer as well. And at least a senior engineer level of engineering skills is something that every EM needs to have. Putting that out of the way, what other things they would be checking is that they would try to understand how you deal with people above you, below you, and beside you. Which means that above you means that you might be reporting into a VP or a CTO or there would be more senior people from other departments like the chief of product or let's say there would be somebody who is um, like the head of a certain business unit who require work to be delivered by your tech team. 
and you would be answerable to them. Then there would be people who are your peers, the product manager of your team maybe, or engineering managers of other teams with whom your team has to work. And then people below you in the hierarchy, which is the people who are reporting to you in your team. And, and how do you deal with all these three sets of people in both favorable as well as unfavorable conditions? And it's very often to have interview questions in engineering management where people ask, when was the last time you disagreed with someone in your uh, team? And how did you tell them that you disagreed with them? How did you get them to agree to work on something that they disagree with? Similarly, among your peers, has it ever happened that you and another team have to uh, compete for the same resource, whether it's a computational resource, whether it's a budgetary resource, whether it's a human resource, an engineer that you want in your team and somebody else wants in your team. How have you handled that conflict? How did you actually end up getting that resource or did your peer end up getting the resource? What was the conversation? People will ask questions like this. Then people will also ask questions like, how many times you have uh, found that the task that you have been given by the CTO or the CPO is something that you feel is not correct? And how have you been able to correct them or how have you been able to get your point across? These are questions that get asked. Uh, the thing is that these are questions that you can't actually sail through fictitiously because there are people who have themselves been in these situations. You might come up with a fictional story, but if they dig down, if they ask a two, three follow-up questions, the fiction will sort of fall through. So the reality is to get through any of these rounds, you actually need to have had these experiences, right? And that brings me uh, to the, I would rather probably cover this a little later, which is about uh, what's the best way to move into engineering management. But then let me move to the second thing, which is apart from managing stakeholders, is another thing that most uh, good engineering teams, most big companies would be interested in knowing, at least at a senior and director of engineering level position, is your understanding of business context, uh, time and money estimation uh, powers that you have. So they might ask you that this is a case study, this is a project that we have to build. In your estimate, how much time would it take to hire a team that can build this? And in your estimate, how much budget would you need to be able to build this team and then this team to build this product? Okay. And, and what I have seen is sometimes people are coming from a background of having been managers at a very early stage manager at a very large company or managers in service-based companies where people haven't had to do dollar cost estimation of building teams and dollar cost estimation of building tech products or having to do, by dollar I don't mean, you know, not the currency dollar versus the rupee. I mean, dollar cost estimation is a term which means that estimating monetary value of what you're building, estimating monetary cost of what you're building, estimating the ROI of what you're building. And then this will automatically mean questions around how to do technical debt trade-offs as well. Like something needs to be built today. Do we build a platform and a library which will help us build it? Or do we don't have time for now, so we'll just build it somehow, but later on we will have to pay this debt. Do we set up testing frameworks? Do we set up continuous integration and continuous delivery setups now? Do we not do it, but we come back to it later? What is the cost of taking a tech debt? And what is the cost of paying that debt one year later? Do you understand these things? Have you taken decisions on, on taking up a debt or, or you know disagreeing to take up a debt? These are questions that will get asked and you will have to have some real past experiences to show for it mostly because these are not questions you can you can really answer in a theoretical way. Uh, and that brings me to actually uh, the answer about what is the best time in your career and what is the best way to move into engineering management. And, and, and I'd like to break down a misconception and a myth that you know, it's not at all easy, by the way, to move from a engineering a senior engineering IC role into engineering management while switching jobs. It's actually easier to do it while you are at your current job. The reason it is because there are most big tech companies usually have an internal program where you can be a temporary engineering manager to try out the role or they will have internal learning programs where they will teach you management 101 kind of things where they will teach you technical writing, documentation, soft skills, speaking with upward, downwards, peer level stakeholders, they will teach all of these things, which will help you. And after teaching that, uh, they will let you manage a team 
and and uh, they will you know ask you whether you liked that experience yourself and then they will give you a review and based on if both agree you you can be allowed to move into engineering management for example versus if all your life you have been an individual contributor if you have been an ic engineer and then while switching jobs you say that okay i will take up an engineering management role what essentially will be happening is that you won't have these real experiences to talk about you would have not had ever done a dollar cost approximation you would have never had had to grapple with technical debts taking them now or taking them later you would might not have had actual conflicts upwards downwards with people to be able to give real uh, experiences as um, examples so that's the reason why i generally would always advise that Uh, never try to move from an IC role to EM role while making a switch, because a the interview process itself would be difficult for you. B also, uh, when you move while going from an IC to EM role itself is a cultural shift. You will have a double cultural shift because you will moving to a different company as well. Now you have to understand the the traditions, the rituals, the processes of the new company. while being a person who actively runs those rituals and those processes because that's the job of the engineering manager the engineering manager is the person who runs the processes who is part of the process so yeah uh, while within your existing organization if you do the move you already know the processes you have talked to your own manager you know what kind of things they do at least part of it you know you might not know certain things they do which are not visible to you but some parts are visible to you so making the change there is uh, easier so that's about you know uh, i think i have covered how you can make the change what are the things that are asked and what the job entails hopefully this gives a clear picture to people who were thinking of whether or not they should move and people who were thinking of how to move uh, hopefully this video answers those things if this was helpful f- please do share this with other people whom it might be useful for like the video and please subscribe to our channel if you like videos like this and want to see more of them thank you so much